The years that Witcher games are released are all notably good years for video games as a whole. 2007, 2011, and now 2015. I know correlation does not imply causation, but CD Projekt Red has hit the nail on the head three times in a row now, each time driving that nail deeper into the board. I'm starting to believe that Witcher games actually are a major cause for these great years. I finally, after a whopping 85 hours, wrapped up The Witcher 3. That is to say, I wrapped up my first playthrough for review purposes. I'm chomping at the bit to start over again for pleasure, but next time I'll be playing on the hardest difficulty setting, completing as many missions as possible, and making a lot of different decisions. The Witcher 3 isn't a perfect game, but it is as close to perfection that I've probably ever seen. It is a massive adventure with a compelling storyline, highly enjoyable gameplay, and it's all set in the best looking video game world I've ever laid eyes on. And it has a great soundtrack to boot. For newcomers to the series, a Witcher is a professional monster hunter, who at one time was human, but is now considered a mutant after having their body drastically altered through chemicals. Politically, they're meant to take no sides, and are often renowned for their impartiality. The Witcher Geralt is on a quest to find his former lover Yen and their adopted daughter Ciri, who's on the run from the Wild Hunt. The majority of the game's main storyline is tracking Ciri's activities from one location to the next as she clashes with the vicious warriors and barely escapes with her life. But in order to find her whereabouts, Geralt has to earn the trust of nobility and peasants alike by paying for their information with professional monster hunting favors. Everything you do in the game has lasting repercussions. The order that you take on each mission and the choices you make during the quests all have effects. But in true open world RPG form, it's not only about the main story. A good portion of the experience is exploring the world for new and better gear, finding side quests, and of course, hunting large monsters for money. Most towns have notice boards where players can reveal missions within the map, sort of like towers in the Assassin's Creed series, and monster hunts have a Batman Arkham investigation feel to them. Geralt surveys the area, finds clues in the form of notes, diaries, and mangled corpses, or footprints or scent trails. The investigation will often lead to discovering what type of monster you're about to face, in which you can read up in the game's bestiary to find out which tools are best to use to bring the monster down, aside from using your trusty silver sword. Like past Witcher games, the types of monsters you face are incredibly varied and often depend on where you are physically. High in the mountains, and you're likely to find harpies. Near or in water, you're going to find drowners. Deep in the woods will bring about wolves and dogs, and battlefield sites will likely have a good number of ghouls, and so on. But you'll also face off against some large monsters, like griffins, forktails, wyverns, and more. The monster variety alone is noteworthy, from the bog-dwelling hags to the sirens that will actively hunt you both above and below water. Each monster type is fascinating, well-designed, and based on mythology or folklore. The smaller enemies might not be much of a challenge when faced alone, but in groups their AI is smart enough to gang up on you and flank you, which should give players a good challenge for a long time. The story, however you play it, is gripping and varied enough and deserves multiple playthroughs. Clever characters, all with wonderful voice acting performances, will stick with you. Defecating to the sunrise, downright glorious. Fans of the books and the games won't be disappointed. Though only the decisions you made in Witcher 2 have an effect on Witcher 3, Witcher 1 fans will love the locations, the characters, and even some of the music that are resurrected for the event. No, players don't need to read any of the books or play any of the previous games to appreciate the game, but fans will definitely find much more to love. There were times when the game left me legitimately scared. I also felt elation, sorrow, sympathy. I felt joy for my victories, but I also felt conflicted when I saw how my decisions affected the game's citizens. Aside from being a good story, it'll take players on an emotional ride. As a weird note, I think this is the first game ever to tackle the appropriate mood of breaking up with someone, or that awkward feeling you get from being forced to spend time around an ex. The game's setting plays just as big of a role as some of the characters. Battlefield sites are adorned with broken shields, abandoned siege towers, and obviously corpses. Meanwhile, isolated locations can be home to some unnerving forests with creepy abandoned huts. The dark places of the world are appropriately dark, which only adds to the immersion, forcing players to either light a torch or drink a potion to see. 
jagged ocean cliffs are the final resting places for battered ships and cargo. The cities feel lived in. This world is a horrific clash of religion, science, politics, and real, and oftentimes dark, magic. The size, scope, and utility of its gigantic maps are outstanding. Few locations feel like cookie-cutter models being pasted throughout the world. Instead, the entire map system and cities within all feel hand-modeled. The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt does have a few hang-ups. For starters, the inventory management system is kinda horrible. There's plenty of people vocally displeased with how much Geralt can carry. That didn't bother me as much. There's already a weight mod in existence, but two, for me it adds to the story that Geralt is a drifter and has to manage what he does or doesn't bring with him. My problem is that there's no sort function to really put things into a usable fashion. There is a sort button which works fairly well for the equipment and weapon menu, but in the alchemy menu, it doesn't bunch similar items together. I found that if I had a pile of over 100 of any particular item, it didn't put the spillover pile into an adjacent space. I had to manually dig through to see what was duplicated. My other complaint about the game is Roach, Geralt's trusty steed. Roach looks great, he controls terribly. There's a clever mechanic that will let Roach auto-run if you place him on the road. That portion of his controls is pretty inventive. When Roach is off-road, he turns awkwardly and will stop in his tracks for pretty much any obstacle in his way. Real horses will tear through the woods. Roach sees any minor obstacle as an impasse. Both of these problems can be fixed with patches, and CD Projekt Red had fixed a similar inventory cluster jam in Witcher 1, but there's no guarantee that that will ever happen. Speaking of patches, the game has already had a few performance patches. Performance-wise, I feel the game ran great, and it has plenty of options to tweak if your machine can't handle its beefy requirements. I ran into one glitch with the game that happily didn't halt my main story progress. I found myself frustrated with finding a key for a particular door. I managed to sneak my way around it using some inventive environmental exploration. The end result let me finish my quest, but it never removed my quest from my inventory. So for the final one third of my playthrough, it became my default quest that would populate after finishing any other quest. Annoying, but far from game breaking. I love the way CD Projekt Red handled the entire development process. No, the final product isn't a one-to-one -one match with what was shown in E3's past, but they still managed to exceed almost every one of my expectations. They treat customers like people, with limited funds and time, instead of cows being lined up to slaughter. The DLC they're adding to the game doesn't feel stripped away from the main game. There's no needless, tacked-on multiplayer for the purpose of selling a few extra copies. There's no gimmick gameplay that relies on daily, repetitive, needless exercises, a disease that mobile games have horrendously infected the rest of the market with. They have a consistent reputation for quality control of their games. Most issues that people will find will likely be patched out in the near future. What impresses me most is that this plays like what all video games should strive to be. A video game. It's not a movie in video game form. There aren't countless cheesy escape sequences where Geralt has to run down a flaming hallway. The final boss hasn't been distilled into a series of quick time events so you can watch him fall from a helicopter skid gear. It's a video game. It's interactive. My choices have real consequences, and oftentimes the choices that have the biggest effect aren't shown in a good or evil dialogue box. Sometimes I didn't even know that I was making a choice that would affect the events in the game. Without mincing words, the Witcher 3 is a masterpiece. Yes, there are some objective problems with it, but they are minuscule in comparison to what the game has accomplished. It has raised the bar for the entire video game industry in so many ways, both inside and outside the game. This is one of the finest role-playing games I've ever played, and it is the best open-world game I've ever experienced. It shows what can be accomplished and appreciated without needing to be a yearly rehash, or forcing players to wait eight years for a sequel. It is the new high mark of quality for any game that gives player choice within a story. In over 30 years of playing video games, The Witcher 3 rightfully earned a place in my personal top five. I know for a fact I'll be replaying this as often as I can in my spare time. I'm looking at a 60% total completion rating after 85 hours. Considering this is a $60 game at full price, that makes me absolutely giddy. I recommend this game to everyone who plays video games. Everyone.
This video is made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.